Hi, good afternoon. It's two o'clock now. Um, we'll get going. Um, if you enter late or miss the session, obviously I'm not chatting to you then, but we will record this and post it on YouTube and I'll send out a link to um, the video at a later stage. I am just going to quickly introduce myself, then I'm going to switch off the video because the internet is sometimes a bit slow during the day. So I'm Francois Stein. I'm a chartered accountant. I've been lecturing management accounting for more than 10 years at various universities. And for the last three years, I've been lecturing online at the Baldi. And I love management accounting because if you understand it, then you don't have to spend as much time studying it like you do with financial accounting and tax, for instance, where there's rules that you and specific steps um, that you have to memorize. So management accounting can take a lot of time without results if you memorize stuff, or if you understand it, then you can save a lot of time and score well and even enjoy it. So I'm going to switch off my camera now. If you have any questions, pop it in the questions section there on the right hand side at the bottom. Um, if you cannot hear me, also do the same. Uh, so let's uh, switch off the camera and get going. So how I'm going to do this today is I'm just going <clears> to <throat> go through a very simple example on how to deal with limiting factors in a relevant costing question. So this is a fairly standard question. So if you see these questions, it's always the same, but it's important to understand. So that's what I'm going to focus on is understanding what we're doing instead of memorizing any steps. So if my dogs bark in the background, I do apologize. Um, I'm working from home like most of you. So uh, let me just page on. So another thing I want to mention here is you can use this promo code EXAMS10 for the rest of the month for 10% discount on any of our courses. And also I'm going to somewhere in this uh, video or in this session ask a very simple question and the first person to answer the question, you'll get it right, don't worry will get a free exam course of your choice. So listen up uh, for that question and you can pop your answer in the question section on the right hand side there. <clears throat> so let's get going. So this is a simple question. Um, it will typically be in MAC 2601 or MAC, 3, MAC 3701 or even then in CTA. And I just wanna mention this, your basics. What we're going to do now is the most important thing. Even in CTA, it's the basics that lose marks for students, not the tricky stuff. The tricky stuff are generally uh, 20 to 30 percent of the marks, even less, and the basics are 50 or 60 percent of the marks. And that is why students fail. So we've got two products. They give us the sales demand in units per month. Always pay attention to months or years, the period. Anyways, this is per month now. That's in units. Then a selling price per unit, variable cost per unit. So already when you see selling price per unit and variable cost per unit, contribution per unit must pop into your head. We, you must get comfortable thinking of uh, or seeing the bigger picture. And then they give us machine hours required per unit, the two manufacturer unit, and then labor hours per unit. So they already, it hints at a possible constraint or limiting factors, but we don't know yet. Then they've got fixed cost per month. So now we've got all our variables for um, cost, volume, profit analysis, for instance, selling price, variable cost, and fixed costs. So see, everything is related. Then they give us another clue, variable machine or available machine hours per month, 2000. So it's a limit and available labor hours, 3,500 per month. So that's our capacity. Remember, any or all companies will have a limit um, or a capacity. It's, it won't be unlimited within a relevant range, obviously. So now the question, determine the optimal product mix and then calculate the maximum profit that can be earned. And the maximum profit will be at the optimal product mix. So when you hear the words optimal product mix, you know this is a limiting factor question, or you have to consider um, the effect of those constraints or possible constraints um, on the question. So what is optimal product mix? What does it mean? It means we need to calculate how many units of A are we going to sell and how many units of B are we going to sell. 
that's all. And then what will the profit be at those units? So it's a simple profit calculation. Now, if there are no constraints, how many units of each are we going to sell? So it's not a trick question. We will sell 800 of A and 1,200 of B. Our sales demand. We will, if if we have the resources or the the capacity, we will sell as many units as we can. But obviously, we are always limited to what people want to buy, and that's our sales demand. So our sales demand is, is sort of like a limit. So we will sell. So this is if there's no constraints, we will sell 800 of A and 1,200 of B. Our sales demand. What will our profit be at that sales mix or at that level? Well, we can calculate this. It's our contribution per unit of A and the contribution of a, a unit of B. So it's our selling price, less our variable cost, gives us 100 rand per unit of A. And for B, it's our selling price of 350, less our variable cost of 280, gives us whoop, 70 rand per unit of B. So that's how much each unit, a single unit, contributes towards our profit. 100 for A and uh, 70 for B. Now, here's the question for that free exam course. So be ready to type in um, in the question section your answer. If we had to choose product A or B to focus on our marketing effort and sales efforts, which one would we want to sell more of? If you look at the first part of this uh, question, which of the two products? Ah, that's right, Kerry. We want to sell as many of A, or we would like to focus on A instead of B. And the reason for that is it contributes more. There's no use in spending all our time punting product B if it brings only seven rand per unit, if we can spend that energy uh, selling product A, which has a higher contribution per unit. So at the end, we, I will contact you afterwards uh, to, to arrange the admin around the free course. Um, and if you missed it, don't worry. Next time we'll do the same. Next week we'll have a free webinar again where we give another free exam course of your choice away. Okay, so now the profit. So how do we calculate the profit? Well, we need to calculate total contribution. So one unit of A contributes 100. So if we sell 800, that's the sales demand of A, at 100 Rand contribution each, that brings in 80,000 Rand. And then B, the demand is 1,200 Rand. Contribution that each one brings in is 70. So that's a total contribution for product B of 84,000. And we can deduct our fixed cost. That's the last step to get to our profit of 64,000. So this is if there's no constraints. But let's look at the question again. They said there's available machine hours, 2,000, and available labor hours, 3,500. So what is the first thing that we need to do? I know some of you might have memorized that you need to calculate the contribution per limiting factor. But there's even, even before that, we need to do something else. We first need to test whether there is a limit or a limiting factor or test whether there is a constraint because at the demand we might be way below our capacity and then there's no constraint then this profit will still apply we can still meet the demand so how do we test whether there is a constraint we will calculate how many machine hours are required to produce all of the units of a and b at the 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 estimated demand and then the same for labor hours so for machine hours we'll take product a's demand of 800 units times two hours per unit that's 1600 hours to produce all the units of a that we can sell at the current demand and for b the demand is 1200 rand it takes half an hour to make or off uh, uh, 30 minutes or or half a machine hour to make a product a unit so that gives us 600 uh, machine hours that's required. And in total, we need 2,200 machine hours to produce enough units to fill the demand for both products. And if we compare that to our limitation, remember they said we only have 2,000 machine hours per month, but we need 2,200. That's why it's in red here. We have a constraint. So machine hours we have established now is a constraint. Now we need to test for labor hours. So labor hours, 800 units times one labor hour per unit. So remember in the question, it's only one labor hour per unit. And then two for unit product B. So two hours times the units. 
and that gives us 3,200 labor hours required to produce all the units at the current demand. And that is less than the labor hours available, so it's within our capacity, so labor is not a constraint. Now, that's good news because if we have two constraints, it might complicate matters. Um, if, the if there are more than one constraint, which you won't see in level two or in MAC 2601, there will always just be one. If there are two and they have a conflict in rankings, in other words, the one suggests we must make product A and the other one suggests we must make product B, then you have to use linear programming. And that they, they I'm 100% certain they won't ask that in, in a, year, a second year. And even in third year, it's very unlikely they might ask you to explain it, but not to calculate it. So don't worry about that. We're just going to look at, in most cases, there will be one constraint, and now we need to uh, deal with it. So the question again, what is the optimal product mix? So how does this change now? In the previous question where there was no constraints, we said we will focus on the product with the highest contribution, and then we'll go to the product with the second highest contribution, etc. So we could have ranked the products. But since there were no limitation, we would just make the total sales demand. Now we know machine hours is a constraint. So we don't have enough machine hours to sell 800 units of A and 1,200 units of B. So our demand from our customers, the market, is not a constraint anymore. The constraint now is machine hours. We don't have enough. So what do we do? And this is where understanding is important. You can memorize the next steps. It's, it's, a, it's easy steps but you have to understand it. So the principle is we need to make the maximum contribution, not profit because fixed costs stay the same, maximum contribution per machine hour that we use because it's a constraint. So every time we, if we, if we use a labor hour, we don't care really because we've got more than enough. We've established that we have more than enough. When we use a machine hour, we have to maximize the contribution that that machine hour brings in because we don't have enough of it. So that's why it's a, it's a bottleneck, it's a constraint. So how do we do that? And that's where the, the second step comes in. The first step was establish whether there's a, con, a limiting, uh, a window, whether there's a constraint, and there was. Second step is contribution per limiting factor. So we've already calculated the contribution, 100 Rand for A, that was selling price less variable cost, and 70 Rand for B is 350 less 280. Now we will divide the contribution by the machine hours consumed by each product. So if product A, they said consume two hours, that means whenever we spend a valuable, scarce, rare machine hour, we only make 50 Rand contribution for that hour because there's two hours to make a 100 Rand contribution, one unit. So think of it as taking the machine hour, now it's not there anymore, it's not available anymore, so we spent it, and there's a limited amount. So every time we spend one, we make for the company to contribute to profit 50 Rand per hour. For B on the other hand, because we only need half an hour, we can make two units per hour. And our contribution per unit is 70. So 70 divided by that half an hour gives us 140 Rand per machine hour. So think of it again. Whenever we take a valuable scarce machine hour from the shelf or wherever, it's just a figure of speech, and we use it, so it's not there anymore, we can make two units of B, and that will earn us 140 Rand. So now we can rank the products according to the contribution per limiting factor or the contribution per machine hour. So now if we had the choice between the two, we would want to focus on B because B brings in way more per machine hour. And remember, we're going to run out of machine hours before we run out of demand or labor hours. So we need to maximize our contribution earned when we use machine hours. So we will start producing product B and then when we run into our demand when we remember we still can't sell more than 1200 if we can we would have sold only product b with our limited machine hours so we will make 1200 units of b and then if there's any machine hours left we'll use that to make product a so that's how the ranking works 
So with our available machine hours, that's 2,000. We don't care about labor hours because we have more than enough. They'll be left at the end. With our limited machine hours, 2,000, we'll first make, that's in red here, 1,200 units of B. It's 1,200 because that's our sales demand. There's not enough customers to sell more than that. How many machine hours will we deplete when we make 1,200 units of B? Well, we'll multiply by half an hour. That's how many labor or machine hours it takes to make one unit. So we'll only use 600 hours. So if we deduct that from our available machine hours, we are left with 1,400 machine hours. Now we will sell as many of A as possible with the remaining machine hours. And we know it's not going to be enough to sell the total demand because we established that there is a, a constraint. So how many units can we make with 1,400 uh, machine hours? Well, it takes two hours to make one unit. So if we divide the available hours by two, we get 700 units. So now our optimal sales mix or optimal product mix is 1,200 units of B, maximum demand, plus 700 units of A. So that's until we don't have machine hours left. And now the second part of the question was, what is our profit? Calculate the maximum profit that can be earned. So now we'll simply use the units that we have at the bottom here, the optimal product mix units, and calculate profit again. 1,200 units of B at a contribution per unit of 70. Remember, we, we are working in units here, so we don't multiply it by the 140 uh, contribution per hour. It's units. So we must go back to the contribution per unit of 70 that we calculated right at the start. Selling price, less variable cost. So that's a common mistake that I see. You, you, you've used contribution per limiting factor and now you want to plug it in here. So remember, we're working in units, so the contribution must be in units. And that'll give us 84,000 Rand. That's the same as we had before. And then for A, we can only sell 700, we can only make 700 units and we'll earn 100 rand per unit. So it's still more than B, but we are wasting more machine hours. And that'll bring us in 70,000 rand. So our total contribution is 154,000. And we must remember to deduct the fixed cost to get to our profit of 54,000. So it's as simple as that, but you need to understand every, every part of this process. And that is in everything in Mac. And that's a, a really study advice I want to give you. When you study Mac, this applies to activity-based costing or the formats of the absorption and variable costing income statements or standard costing variances, whatever you're studying in Mac. When you're going through the steps, you have to understand what each and every step means and why you're doing it. If you don't understand it, you have to find out because memorizing the steps is a sure way to, to um, get confused in a test and then possibly lose all your marks or not even know where to start. So you need to understand what you're doing. It's simple steps once you've understood what you are doing. Now, if we go back to the required section here, we had two parts here, and that is when they are generous. They can ask you to first do the optimal product mix and then calculate the maximum profit. Another thing they could have done is just give you the same information, the same case study, the same question, but only one required, which asks, calculate the maximum profit that can be earned. Now, if they ask that, you must realize that you need to test for constraints and you need to first establish the optimal product mix before you can calculate the maximum profit. So that's why you need to understand what the problem is and how, which tools, like in this case, this relevant costing or limiting factors steps, which tools we use to answer that specific problem. And that's a way of thinking in management accounting, because if you're going to memorize steps, it's like, if I see this question, I do these steps. It's fine if you do that after you understand it, but if you just do that, it's very dangerous and very easy um, to make a mistake and get lost. Are there any questions? I know this was super short, um, but I know you also have a lot of other stuff that you need to do. Are there any questions on what we've done here, um, optimal product mix? If you have, you can pop it in the question section there on the right-hand side, or you're welcome to email me or us at Tabaldi. So the, the email address here is queries at tabaldi.com. And even if you just want to chat about your studies, if you want to chat about the rest before um, the exam period, 
uh, what you need to do or um, if you want to chat about next semester or next year even um, there's no commitment or anything um, Helen loves to chat to her students so please just pop us a mail there tell us where you are at, in your studies and and what your concerns are and your plan for the future we'd love to hear from you and then if you want to take advantage of this 10 percent discount on any of our courses until the end of may um it, the, the promo code is exams 10 and if you're not sure how that works again please chat to to helen at queries at tabaldi.com and watch out check on our facebook page every week we post three undergrad videos and three cta videos and they are straight from our classroom so it'll give you a good idea of what the lectures look like. And there's uh, a lot of great content there to actually help you with your studies um, during this period. And we've got a YouTube channel as well, Tabaldi, where we've posted numerous videos. So if there's something you struggle with, you might actually find what you're looking for there. I did a whole session on activity-based costing uh, two weeks ago. There was absorption costing a full, almost an hour section. So please go and check that out if those are topics that you struggle with. Um, and then please chat with us uh, Kerry, I'll send you a mail on that exam course that you won, and please join us again next week. I think that will be on auditing two. Good luck and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.